Great Figure by William Carlos Williams. Among the rain and lights, I saw the figure five in gold on a red fire truck, moving, tense, unheeded, to gong clangs, siren howls, and wheels rumbling through the dark city. This is just to say, I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox, and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet, and so cold. The Red Wheelbarrow by William Carlos Williams So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rain water beside the white chickens. Flowers by the Sea by William Carlos Williams When over the flowery, sharp pastures edge unseen the salt ocean lifts its form. Chicory and daisies, tied, released, seem hardly flowers alone, but color and the movement, or the shape, perhaps, of restlessness, whereas the sea is circled and sways peacefully upon its plant-like stem. The Great Figure by William Carlos Williams Among the rain and lights, I saw the figure five in gold on a red fire truck, moving, tense, unheeded, to gong clangs, siren howls, and wheels rumbling through the dark city. The Great Figure What is the Great Figure? That would be the first question you would ask yourself. And then... It gives us a setting immediately. Among the rain. Well, what great figure among the rain? We're already intrigued by what's going to happen in this image. And then more image. Lights. What did we see with among the rain and the lights? We saw the figure five. There's a compounding effect here, but it's also a, a forgive the pun, driving effect. Now we get more concrete images in gold on a red gold red fire truck but what does this mean what is this doing it's moving how is it moving tense unheated to gong clangs very unique word maybe gives us a setting of uh, time to siren howls good word choice again the howling of a siren and wheels rumbling where again through the dark city the shortness of the poem of course is impact we don't have to interpret anything um, all we see is this image but the image is compounded through the use of line break um, through the short lines and the answering of each natural question that we have as inquisitive human beings this is just to say I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox, and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet, and so cold. This is just to say is one of my favorites um, just because of the emotion and level of interpretation that's here. Um, it is ambiguous yet uh, seems like it's very purposeful. I have eaten. Again, what have you eaten, William? The plums. Okay, plums. Where? In the ice box. That's one stanza. I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox. Okay, statement of fact. It's 
intriguing, but it's just that. It's just the image. It's just the idea. And then that which you were probably saving for breakfast, this assumption by the author to the reader. But who's the you probably saving for breakfast? Um, there's a lot of uncertainty here. But the forgive me uh, helps to clarify that uncertainty. And then complete um, unremorsefulness. They were delicious, so sweet and so cold. Um, I'm not really asking for forgiveness here. I'm just telling you that uh, they were amazing and I'm sorry you missed out. But the image stands even without um, the implication of uh, the idea of a note on a fridge or something. The Red Wheelbarrow by William Carlos Williams So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rain water beside the white chickens. The Red Wheelbarrow is considered one of the most famous and maybe important poems of the 20th century simply because of its status as an image poem, I think, um, but also because of the author, William Carlos Williams, who exemplifies the idea of an image and so much um, purpose behind a single image that we attribute to these things or if you've ever seen uh, a leaf blowing down uh, the street and been in awe of it or uh, sat on a, a park bench and watched the motion of the trees um, or just looked at your hand and thought, wow, I'm alive. Uh, that's the sense that you get in the red wheelbarrow. So much depends. So much depends. <laughs> what depends? What are we depending on? We already have the title, The Red Wheelbarrow. Why? Because it carries. We, we want to ask why, but there is no why. It doesn't matter. And again, that's the power. And then a simple proposition upon. So much depends upon. Upon what? We're forced as humans to ask the question. We're confused by it. And then what upon a red wheelbarrow, of course. And this red wheelbarrow, here's the image, is glazed. What a great word, glazed with rain. With rain, break, water. What kind of rain? Rain, water, it adds tension, that break does. And context, beside the white chickens. Uh, who cares about the white chickens? Where, why? All of these things are up to interpretation by the author course, but also by the listener, the, the reader, the, the questioner, the human that it's being presented to. So much depends on us answering this question, or does it? Flowers by the Sea by William Carlos Williams when over the flowery, sharp pastures edge unseen, the salt ocean lifts its form. Chicory and daisies, tied, released, seem hardly flowers alone, but color and the movement, or the shape, perhaps, of restlessness, whereas the sea is circled and sways peacefully upon its plant-like stem. Flowers by the sea went over the flowery, sharp pastures. A combination of words there that is, I think, amazing. I love sharp as the describer here. Sharp pastures, edge, 
like a pasture can be sharp, but then pasture's edge makes sense as um, an emphasis. But again, it's all about the line breaks. Unseen, the salt ocean. You know just over the mound of these flowers is the ocean. And the pasture's edge is breaking um, that. It lifts its form. The form of the ocean, it lifts the form of the ocean. The land lifts the ocean. That's an amazing thought, I think. Chicory and daisies, something very specific. Tide, released, seem hardly flowers alone. They are something greater in the presence of this ocean and of this reality of breaking the line here. But color and the movement, or the shape, perhaps. Something about it. He's trying to identify it, but he can't quite get there. Of restlessness. Am I restless? Are the flowers restless? What's really restless here? That's the interesting thing that he continues to uh, do in his, all of his poetry, and it's based off of the short stanzas and the line breaks. But the sea is circled and sways. The sea is circled. The sea is not circled, typically. Uh, the land is encircled by the sea. But the sea sways peacefully upon plant-like stems. It's a reversal here. Do we, are we talking about the flowers? Are we talking about the sea as a metaphor? Um, that the sea is the flowers. That the flowers are waving, um, ebbing back and forth just as the sea ebbs back and forth. Um, that they are restless like the sea. And suddenly the image can uh, become something so different. And then, of course, if you put yourself in this, then you are the one as a plant standing at the line, seemingly insignificant at the ebb and flow of the ocean, the sea. But yet somehow you are the break, you are the realization of awe and wonder. Or then, of course, it's just an image and I'm just talking about whatever I feel exactly. That's what poetry is, is what I feel um, to be uh, important and what is impacting me. Of course, the author has an intent, um, but in imagery poetry, it's much more ambiguous and purposefully so. Ambiguity is purposeful. So, what do you think about all these William Carlos Williams poems? How do they move you? What images do you see? What line breaks do you see? What emphasis do you see? What word choices do you see? How are the stanzas used? How are you moved by Williams poems? Thanks for listening to this edition of Chateau Tales, a poetry edition of Chateau Tales. I hope you enjoyed all of the poetry by William Carlos Williams and continue to listen to more stories, whether creepy or impactful in some other way. And remember, be careful out there.